printed sheet of bank notes, uncut and unsigned. Now, back in the gay 90s, any accredited bank could print its own bank notes such as these and issue them as legal tender, redeemable in gold on demand. So you can imagine what a field day counterfeiters and crooks must have had back before the federal government stepped in to regulate and stabilize our currency. Well, in this episode of our series, this kind of easy money and three crooks create quite a problem for our hero. The newspaper copy boy named, uh, uh, uh... Gallagher! 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 Oh, Gallagher! Gallagher! Running down the street after another news beat. Gallagher! Gallagher! Wearing out his shoes, nosing around for who, what, when, where, how, what, when, where, why, what, when, where, news, nosing around for news. He'd follow up a story no matter where it led. Unafraid, he made the grade where others feared to tread. Feared to tread. No slicker could out-trick him. No one was quicker than... Quicker than that sharp as a thorn. Natural born. Newspaper man, that's Gallagher, Gallagher. Running down the streets after another news beat. Gallagher, Gallagher. Mr. Crowley. You should by now be familiar with the rules that govern the function and efficiency of the daily press staff, should you not? Then repeat the rule that pertains to reading. Thou shalt not read anything in this office that is not a newspaper. And at what hours does this rule prevail? At all hours, sir. Gallagher, I'm warning you for the last time. If I ever again catch you so much as glancing at the cover of a dime novel or having the same in your possession or on your person, I will have you summarily dismissed. Do you understand? No, sir. In vulgar language, I will fire you. Oh, I know that, sir. What I don't understand is what's so bad about the Wild West. Do you think it edifying to make heroes out of Pool room hooligans like Jesse James and Billy the Kid? But those are the bad guys. And they're always captured by the good guys like Deadwood Dick that you just burned. I asked Mr. Dwyer. He was there. He knows. I refuse to degrade myself by discussing this odious subject any further. You know the rules. Abide by them or perish. Now, get that rewrite down to composing. And then get over to the courthouse. Brownie's waiting with copy. Come on. Uh... 
Yes, Mr. Crowley. I want you to stop filling that boy's head with Western nonsense. I wasn't aware that I was. Your name was mentioned? Now, whatever I tell the boy about the West is truth, not nonsense. Truth or fiction, it amounts to the same thing, a time waster. I want no more of it, or I'll get myself a new sporting editor. <laughs> Sorry, I got your book burned up. Oh, that's all right, Gallagher. We have plenty more where that came from. Haven't we? Help yourself. Well, I'd better not. If he catches me again, we'd both lose our jobs. Now, you can't stop reading books just because Crowley can't read anything but his own newspaper. Now, here, take it home. I've got an article in this one on Pawnee Bill. Gee, you a friend of Pawnee Bill's, too? Well, uh, hardly a friend. Uh, a nodding acquaintance might be more accurate. You know something? That's why Crowley don't like the Wild West. He's jealous of you. Jealous? He ain't never been to Abilene or Deadwood City or Tombstone like you have. And met all those famous gunfighters and bad men. So he's jealous. You mean envious? Yeah, envious. People like him are like that to men who live a life of high adventure. Men like you and I, eh? Yeah. Well, someday I'll be, when I get older. Jesus. I was just taking these down to composing, sir. Gallagher, on your way back, get this cash for me at the bank. Yes, sir. What do you got in there, iron? Good afternoon, me wife. Arrest that man. Ooh, what, what, what man? What are you talking about? Him, the one in the gray hat and fancy vest. I'll hurry before he gets away. Uh, just, just a minute. Arrest him for what? He's a bank robber. Oh, to be sure. Yes, of course, yes. I suppose he, he robbed the First National, huh? <laughs> well, not yet, but he will. That's Zip Wyatt, the famous Oklahoma bank and train robber. Uh -huh. he's, got a, he's got a big reward on his head. Are you going to let him get away? Uh, well, now I tell you, better he get away than me lose me position for false arrest. Look, see this guy? What's it say? It says, Zip Wyatt of Oklahoma, wanted by the law in eight states. Oh, I tell you, he's a terrible desperado altogether, huh? <laughs> Just the fastest gun in the West, that's all, and you let him get away. Well, there's me Irish bad luck for you. No, I suppose I, I should have challenged him for the championship, huh? <laughs> well, go ahead and laugh now. The way he holds up the First National, you won't be laughing then, I bet you. Gallagher! Just a word of advice. Stop reading these penny dreadfuls. They do nothing but inflame the imagination of your juvenile mind. Go on. I give you a chance to get promoted to a sergeant and you stand there flat-footed. Uh. <laughs> Anything's possible, of course, but it's highly improbable he'd come this far east. Why? If things got too hot for you in Oklahoma, wouldn't you leave? Naturally, but I'd go on farther west, to the lawless territories. That's where everybody thinks he'll go. So he plays it smart and he goes the other way. Here. He could be right, you know. Remember that embezzler? How everybody thought he left the country, but Gallagher figured he was still in town. And he was. That's right, remember? I admit you bet close to a thousand when it comes to hunches, but this time you're wrong. Never bet against the percentage, Mr. Dwyer. Anytime our Gallagher's right about something, that's when things go wrong. And what are you right about this time, little man? Uh, we were discussing the relative merits of the National League and the American Association. I asked him, Mr. Dwyer, not you. We were discussing the criminal mind, sir. Who's yours? That wasn't very kind of you. Oh, no? Then what are you hiding behind your back? It just so happens to be, sir, one of them nasty books you was warning me about. I know you're wasting your time, sir, 
This was even too wild and wicked for even you to be reading. So, for the good of everyone on the paper, I will burn this devil's work with the infernal flame. Mr. Crowley, I have seen the light. You'll never catch me reading that trash again. Well, this is amazing. It's, it's a little short of miraculous. I owe you an apology. I have sadly misjudged your character. Now, that's all right, Mr. Crowley. All of us are liable to make hasty judgments at times. Oh. Here's some money from the bank draft you had me cash. Oh. Would you count it, please? Yeah. I wouldn't want you to think I robbed the payroll like one of them Western bad guys. What am I doing counting this? Of course it's the right amount. A, a bright, upright young lad like you. Why should I doubt your honesty? As a matter of fact, here's a quarter bonus for you. I cannot, sir, accept a reward for something that is only my duty anyhow. We going to stand around here all day snapping at flies? Back to the courthouse, Brownie. Um, as for you, Mr. Dwyer, you're due at the ballpark in uh, five minutes. As for you, Gallagher, you will cover the ball game this afternoon with Mr. Dwyer. And so help me, don't you dare miss a double play. Yippee! Let's go. Why don't you look where... Gallagher. Mr. Sneed. How have you been? Just fine, sir, are you? Oh, same old thing. Winkleton Detective Agency? Yeah. Gee, it's just like I met you by some sort of fate or something. It just so happens last week I seen Zip White in the First National Bank. Son, please, save your breath. You know who Zip White is, don't you? I most certainly do, but right now I'm right up to here with two murders, three robberies, four forgeries, and one embezzlement. Mr. Sneed, I wouldn't ask for any of the reward. Just a little tip-off money. Something tells me I shouldn't ask, but how much is tip-off money? Ten percent of the reward. That fair enough? Well, it's better than 50-50. Look, I gotta get this copy down to the office. Hot divorce case, you know, millionaire and the actress. Where can I get in touch with you? Well, as I say, I'm rather busy. You still hang around the pool room on 8th? Oh, on occasion, I indulge. Good, if I turn up something hot, I'll look you up. We got a handshake deal? Good. Oh. in the street, turn the corner, follow him. What for? Can't tell you now. It's a matter of life and death. Who's death? Never mind. I'll give you two bits. For two bits? No questions asked. Hurry up before you lose him. I'll see you back here. Brownie, I seen him again. Saw who? Zip White, the Oklahoma bank robber. I was showing you his picture the other day when Crowley caught me. Oh, him. I got Jimmy the boot black tail him. When I find out where he's staying, I'll let you know so you can be there when Sneed puts the pinch on him. Uh, Gallagher, is this another bright idea like the one that almost got me killed along with Dan the Dip? This is even better. Gallagher, almost getting killed is bad enough, but almost getting fired is worse, because when you're still alive, you can feel hunger and misery. Are you following me? You're trying to tell me you don't believe me, is that it? On the contrary, it's because I believe you. And you don't want this lead? I didn't say that. All I said was that I don't want to have anything to do with Mr. Zip Wyatt until he is behind bars or dead. I'm going to have to do this by myself? Just me and Mr. Sneed? I'm afraid so. Afraid is right. Cops afraid to make arrests, reporters afraid to follow leads. Boy, what's the matter with your generation? <laughs>
the top of the morning until you get her? Yeah, now. It's not like you to be lashing around in this fashion. What's up, Letty? I'm casing the bank. Oh, and I, uh, I wouldn't doubt it. Well, I could be for all you cared about the law and order. No, 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 none of your impudence. It's not impudence, Officer Madden, the truth. I always been your friend, ain't I? Well, uh, yes, yes. I can give you some friendly advice. Such as? If you want to get someplace in this world, Officer Madden, you've got to keep your eyes peeled. Open that door when opportunity knocks. The trouble with you, sir... Excuse me. Followed him all the way to the Palace Hotel. The Palace Hotel? Yeah, the Palace Hotel. You sure? That's a first-class joint. I said that's why I followed him, didn't I? Oh, you sure he's staying there? How'd I be sure of that? Didn't you go inside and ask at the desk? I try it, but the doorman catches me and throws me out. What you need is a little more finesse. I'll settle for me quarter. I'm not so sure you earned it. I'll tell you what, I'll go check, and if it turns out you're right, you get it. Hey! <laughs> Gosh, how come they didn't throw you out like they done me? Showed my press pass. Gets this newspaper man anywhere in the world. Find the guy? No, oh, not yet. Ain't he registered? Naturally. He'd be using an alias. Using a what? Never mind. Hey, where are you going? Back to work. What about my quarter? I ran out of small change. Catch me later. Oh, Gallagher. I'll see you around. <laughs> You're up kind of late, ain't you, kid? Well, I'm used to it. If I was your old man, I'd tan you. My folks know I'm working. Working? Working at what? On a story. I'm a newspaper man. Well, get him. A newspaper man yet. Now I know what's wrong with the papers. They've got kids writing that stuff. <laughs> Here's your fare, Pat. Oh. I'll see you later. Someone, kid? Yeah. You look like your springs are sagging. Why don't you climb into my cab and set a while? It's more comfortable. Thanks, mister. I guess I will. Sleep? Of course not. I'm on duty. I'm sorry, kid. I got a fare. Twenty six in Avondale Road. Yes, sir.
I was so busy working, I didn't see it coming up. Are you all right? I sure swell. You're not yourself. You're much too quiet. Let me see your tongue. You've been working pretty hard on that divorce case with Brownie, haven't you? Yeah, I sure have. You look a little peaked. I hope you're not coming down with something. You sure you're not sick? I'm just a little tired, I guess. Hmm. You know, court's not in session this afternoon. Why don't you run home? Have your ma give you some sulfur and molasses and catch up in your sleep. You mean that? Well, you ought to know me by now. Old soft touch Crowley. Go on, run along before I change my mind. Yes, sir. I only get sentimental in spasms. The spasm has now passed. Look busy. Sent home. Too busy. Hanging around here? I was waiting for you. Me? What for? The Zip Wyatt case. I told you I wanted nothing to do with it. This is your last chance, Brownie. No. Zip Wyatt is staying at the Palace Hotel under an alias. He also visits somebody who lives in a rooming house at Avondale and 26th. Interested? A thousand times no. But Brownie, if you could just maybe find out the name he's using at the Palace and Mr. Sneak could. <laughs> Jimmy, say, I gotta hand it to you. You killed him real good. He was here all right. You see? Now give me my two bits. I'll, uh, I'll let you in on something, Jimmy. Now, this yarn I'm working on, it might turn into something real big. Rewards, bonuses, stuff like that. You interested? My mind don't follow you so good, Gallagher. It's on money you owed me. I'm trying to tell you. There's a lot more in this than just nickels and dimes. You bet there is. A whole quarter of a dollar. You promise, Gallagher. Look, don't you want to better yourself? Sure. Well, you gotta gamble a bit. Live dangerous. Give me my quarter. Then I'll live dangerous. If I give you the quarter now, buddy, we're through as business partners, understand? Suits me. Look, kid, you'll never amount to nothing. Why, you don't take a chance now and then. Why, when I was your age... Go on. You ain't no older than I am even, I bet you. Bet you quarter I am. You're on. But first I gotta see the two bits. In cash. Ah, come on. I got more important things to do than... I'd like to hire a rig today. Sir, I'll get one for you. There's a livery stable right around the corner. Shall I have a team in Brome brought around for you? Thank you, young man. But a horse and buggy will do just fine. While you're waiting, how about my junior partner here shining your shoes? Satisfaction guaranteed by me. Good idea. That's a dime against the quarter old, right? Huh? I get you this job that's worth a dime. Now all I owe you is 15 cents. What name shall I give him, sir? Harvey Brown. I haven't put it on my hotel pad. Your buggy, sir? Yes, thank you. Where's the boy that went for the rig? I haven't seen him, sir, not since I hitched up. 
When you see your friend, give him this. You bet, sir. Such a pessimist, Angel. Look on the bright side. That's what I always say. And I always say you can't be too careful, that's all. On hitches, Banjo. I don't know. I still say we ought to have two more helpers. Now, you just cut that kind of talk, Banjo. One gag has a plenty. Look, Missy. If Zip can't crack that drum and we don't have a standby oil man, we're sunk. When Zip says he can do it by ear, then he can do it. Now, there's a good woman, Banjo. Builds a man up before a job instead of worrying him to death. That's nice. Time's a-wasting. Let's get going, huh? See you about 12, honey. Take care, sweetie. With you to live for, I can do no wrong. Come on!
that you, Banjo? Yeah, I thought I heard something. Are you okay? Yeah, almost got it. Just a kid, isn't he? He sure is. They go bad younger every year. What's this generation coming to? Cedo oh. Manny. Sounds like he's hurt bad. You better send for an ambulance and a patrol wagon. Officer, if you just listen to me, I can tell you. Save it for the judge. He's the fellow who's paid to listen to criminals before he puts them behind the cool prison walls to spend what's left of their useless lives. Come on. <laughs> Yes, we have a Gallagher working here. Should be around here somewhere. What? What's he doing there? That's impossible. I'll be right down. Gallagher's been in jail all night for armed robbery. He's what? They can't do that to an employee of this newspaper. I'm getting him out. And there I was when the cops came in. The gun in my hand, the watchman wounded, and Zip going through the window. I know it looks bad, and nobody will believe me. But gosh, Mr. Crowley, can't you call Captain O'Malley and somebody and get me out of here? Yeah. Yeah, I could. But I won't. I beg your pardon, sir? I said I won't. Mr. Crowley. Why not, Mr. Crowley? Because you got yourself in this jam. That's why not. By your own account of last night's adventures, you've been playing detective again. No, I wasn't. I was just trying to get the Daily Press a beat on Sip Wyatt. If I told you once, I told you a hundred times, I'm paying you to be a copy boy, not a reporter. I warned you. I warned you one time too many. Well, this time you're fired. Irrevocably and finally discharged from the staff of the Daily Press. And I hope it teaches you a lesson. Please, Mr. Crowley, you gotta listen. Now, calm down, Gallagher, calm down. We'll talk some sense. We'll get you out. Never you fear. I 
got a right to be sore. That kid's always getting me in the paper in hot water. But he does come up with headline stories now and then. Bah. Remember how he found that bank in Bessler? Sheer luck. How about the inside story on the police scandal? Yeah. We double circulation for a week. Better look before you leap, Mr. Crowley. You could be throwing out the treasure with the trash. Why, well, there's even a story in this kid being arrested. Can't you just see the headlines in the rival papers? Daily press, copy boy thrown to the wolves? That's enough, Mr. Dwyer. You've made your point. What's been done to check out that boy's story? No need to check anything, Mr. Crowley. He was caught in the act by Patrolman Feeney, and his case comes up before the magistrate this morning. Do you mean to tell me that this boy, this innocent little boy, was actually caught with a gun in his hand? It says right here on Patrolman Feeney's squeal sheet that this innocent little boy was not only found with a gun in his possession, but he was in the very act of shooting with it, and himself right inside the print shop premises at the time. Now, if that ain't red-handed, I don't know what red-handed is. What was the child's explanation? Some cock and bull story about a gang of train robbers, but nothing was stolen because Officer Feeney of this precinct arrived on the scene just in the nick of time to prevent it. The boy mentioned an outlaw in his story. Any follow-up on that? To those experienced in crime detection, Mr. Crowley, this so-called Western outlaw was merely a fabrication of the juvenile criminal mind. Of all the stupid police I've ever seen, you guys get the honor badge. Watch your tone there, sir. I'll have you know that that boy's not only not a criminal, but that he happens to be a lot more expert than all of your men put together. He works for the daily press at a job that none of your men could handle because it takes integrity, courage, resourcefulness, imagination, intelligence, and a sense of humor. Now, I want bail set for that boy, and I want him out right now. Desk, 8 Precinct. Sergeant, tell him this is Captain O'Malley. Yes, Captain O'Malley. Uh, $25,000 missing from that print shop was here last night. Did you hear me? $25,000? Yes, yes, sir. The kid's name's Gallagher, sir. Don't you realize the help that boy's been to the... No, Captain. We can't hear me. Yes, Captain. Get that boy's story, or you'll be able to... No! Yes, I... Where's that knucklehead, Feeney? He went home, Sergeant. Then send word to his house. Tell him to stay inside and out of my sight or I'll break his neck. Something wrong? There's something wrong. Is she... Feeney, let's a gang of criminals steal $25,000 worth of uncut, unreleased, freshly printed banknotes right out from under his very nose brings a poor, innocent little boy in here at gunpoint, and you ask me if he's done anything wrong? Well, don't just stand there like a second feeny. Turn that lad loose before the captain comes out here and fires all of us. Talk about that 10% tip-off money I mentioned, Mr. Sneed. You keep every cent of the reward, see? Give me a little elbow room, son. All I want out of this is an exclusive on Zip Wyatt's capture. That way I'll get my job back. Honest, Mr. Sneed, that's all I want out of this. Don't you believe me? Now, where did you say this alleged robber is hiding out? I didn't say. Well, then tell me. I'll go you one better than that, sir. I'll take you there. All right, go hail us a cab. President. Fine. That ought to make this door look real official. Who is the president? Grover Cleveland. No, that was last year. This year is Benjamin Harrison. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. Yeah, that's right. I voted for him twice myself. How do you spell Benjamin? B-E-N. 
still like to know how that kid got in there last night. Forget it. He must have been there before we showed up. I said forget it. We get a lucky break. You have to keep doubting it. Yeah, anything I hate is a guy who keeps questioning a lucky break. Like we don't deserve it or something. Okay, okay. Pleasant day. Nice, respectable neighborhood. Nobody knows where we are. Now, who could ask for more? Andrew over the porch. You stay here. You gonna take him alone? I'm gonna try. That's why you stay out here, in case I don't come out. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bother me. I'll only stay a minute. Now, is that a proper way to come calling on a lady? That'll do, Copper. Where are your manners, Missy? Take his gun. one of the fastest guns in the West. Yeah. I forgot. X-ray, X-ray, read all about it. Zip white captured by newsboy. Read all about it. Zip white captured. Hey, Gallagher. 
Hi, Jimmy. You see this? Picture and everything. You're famous. It's all in a day's work. I saved up six copies for you, Gallagher. Well, thanks a lot, Jimmy. Hey, what are you doing selling papers? I changed my profession. I got smart like you and went into the newspaper game. And how about my quarter, you old? I don't know you know quarter. And what's the idea of giving up a good business for something you don't know nothing about? Now, what do you know about selling papers? You don't have to know anything about it. As long as your reporters keep making headlines, people just naturally keep buying. Now, how about my quarter? Flattery won't get you nowhere. It's 10 cents, not a quarter. 10 cents? What do you mean, 10 cents? I got you Zip White Shine business. That made it 15 cents. You got the nickel tip for me for bringing the rig around from the livery stable, and that makes it a dime I owe you, and that's all. Yeah? Yeah. Gee, all right, then. How about my dime? Tell you what I'm going to do, Jimmy. Seeing as how I wouldn't have got the 10% of Mr. Sneed's reward money without your help, supposing I cut you in on, uh, say, 1% of my 10. Fair enough? 1% less than a dime? Jimmy, you should have stuck to the shoes. Does five bucks sound like a dime? Five bucks? Gallagher! Get down to the courthouse. We're holding the noon edition. If I have to tell you once more, so help me. Got no time to discuss it, Mr. Crowley. I'm in a hurry. Drive right, that kid. He's taken years off my life. If I've told him once, I've told him a hundred times. No loitering on the streets. Well, don't stand there snapping at flies. Go peddle my papers. So help me. If I have to contend with one more. I haven't got time to discuss it, sir. Gotta go peddle your papers. Extra, extra, read all about it. Beats working, doesn't it? But you better not try it. Not this day and age. What I've got here, though, is strictly stage money for use in our pictures. Gallagher! 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 Gallagher. Gallagher, Gallagher, running down the 